they could not explain why people become homosexuals or say they are homosexuals. In other words, when they look at the biology, they look at the genetic issues. They couldn't find a direct correlation between the biology and what people are doing, especially when they say, I'm a homosexual. They couldn't find a scientific basis. But beyond that, the largest ever experiment done worldwide is called the Human Genome Project. The Human Genome Project. And some of the researchers involved in this, investigating this, they, they, they looked at 500 million citizens of the world. 500 million. By the way, when I, I run national uh, uh, service, okay, so the first human rights baseline for Ghana was part of the team, 2014, 2015. We did about 2,500 people nationally. It's a national service. But I'm talking about 500 million. You can't have any other research that beats this. After studying 500 million people, they established that culture and the environment account for 75% of the reason why people select a particular sexual orientation. Let me say that again. Culture. What you see happening to you in your environment as you grow. Culture. And the environment you grew up in. Actually, are the things that influence your mind and how you, you behave over time. 500 million people, and the conclusion is culture and environment determine your sexual orientation to the large extent. And regarding the issue of whether there was any genetic basis for homosexual behavior, they said there's no gauging. At the end of studying 500 million citizens of the world, the Human Genome Project established that there is no genetic basis to see this engaging. In other words, deciding or ending up being homosexual or not is a personal choice. It has nothing to do with the genetics. It has nothing to do with how I was born. These findings therefore oppose the argument that sexual behavior orientation have a basis in genetics. And the conclusion, therefore, is that the LGBTQIA plus proponents cannot claim that they were born that way. Simplicity, period. In that no individual has a justifiable basis to claim that they have a unique gay or homosexual right especially as a fundamental human right. You see, when we say rights, you are saying it's fundamental. It means I was born with it. And let me just give you an example. When you were born, you, you were born with life, isn't it? You have life. It's fundamental. You were born with a mouth, and you know that if you don't eat, you die. It's a fundamental right. You are born to a mother and father, so you are a family. So it's a fundamental right to associate with this. It's a preference. It's a choice. And if we are not careful and we allow that to continue to be a slippery slope, because then those who smoke or want to smoke weed will say it's our right. Those who want to do arm robbery will say it's our right. Are you following me? It's a slippery slope. And we've seen how other jurisdictions, there's confusion, there's chaos coming. And I'll be talking about it as I go along. Don't confuse us. They don't have that basis to say they are gay. Indeed, in 2019, we have the Harvard Magazine I'm showing there. We are our friends who smoke different things. And then the crack people who also come and say, we have a reason to say that this is also our right. Indeed, the legitimacy of the human rights framework as an architecture that the whole world needs to subscribe to. It's weakened when such groups insist that these things are rights. Because what is happening is that the scope of what is called rights is being expanded. But the criteria for expanding the scope is not clear. We know what fundamental human rights are, basic human rights are. They have been the same for several years. They haven't changed. All of a sudden, certain groups 
who have strong lobbies and a lot of cash are trying to confuse everyone. Huh? Until the 1960s, the issue of homosexuality was a medical condition on the books, even in America, American Psychological Association. Go online, you find it. But at a vote, it wasn't changed because of uh, scientific research. They voted, people just voted. They voted to change it from a mental condition to now a normal condition. It wasn't that the science changed, but a group of people who had money went to a vote and they were influenced by whatever happened and they voted that it's no, no longer a mental condition. But we see people who are strong. With one X and one Y chromosome, female with two X chromosomes. Occasionally, there are abnormalities, and you may have people with what we call intersex. But that's a physical observation. If you are not too sure, they have to go and run genetic tests to check that that person who has both male and female, the chromosomal composition, do we have more X, more Y, and then you start because it's not about the, the physical observation. It's about the genetic composition. And the genetic composition can only be established by scientific tests. Let me explain. Many of the people who have been speaking and saying that, oh, sex is not binary because sometimes you have intersex. They are talking like if you bought a saloon car and you, you, it had a tire ring 15. You suddenly say, oh, before, because this car has room 15, it's not a saloon car. You find that you have more XY, then we know it's a male. So what it means is that, unlike the physical observation that we can easily see for those who have only one organ, I will say, immediately we know you are male or female. We will spend one hour to run that test. The test comes out, we will see XX, XY, we will see hormonal levels, and we draw a conclusion. Science has the answer. So people should not say, because there is intersex, therefore, uh, intersex shows that there's more than uh, male and female. That, that's confusing. Get some scientific professors to sit with you and explain the thing to you. If you're not a scientist, maybe you're a lawyer and you don't know, don't go making categorical statements. So the scientific research has established that human beings are binary. Um, the eventual determination, if there's some confusion, can be clarified doing genetic analysis. And these discussions are normally done with a medical team, which is what our friends should have done when they were preparing the big English and all that. Get some scientists to sit with you, to explain matters to you before you draw conclusions. Don't jump to conclusions. Uh, if you are in court, arguing cases we will not challenge you. Maybe in court there's progressive interpretation of the exit of the stool in your system. So you have to wear pampers. And not just that. Because of the wear and tear, the skin is very small. It tears, it opens. The stool that contains bacteria, germs, allows other viruses, one not, to enter your blood system and you get exposed to disease. So the speaker in continent. There's anal cancers and warts. They get mouth and throat cancers, especially for those who then focus on oral sex. And we have the percentages there. It shows you that 80 something percentage of them focus more on oral sex. So the, the categories of the kind of sex they do and what happens is all there. The substance abuse, you see, when you are getting unwell, you want to try and feel okay. So you are likely to get into substance abuse, alcohol abuse, and what have you. They are exposed much more to hepatitis, the data shows. They are exposed much more to the human papilloma virus. They are exposed to syphilis, and they have reduced life expectancy. Indeed, one person, and we go to there, says that in his research he establishes, he feels that they lose 20 to 25 years of their lifetime. Hello? The research is saying that 20 to 25 years are lost. And it's not just because they, their life is cut short. It's also because of the depression, the suicidal uh, uh, connotation. So after a while, you just you decide you want to die. This, these are the benefits we are talking about. This is what we want to promote when we say let's allow it to continue. These are the benefits. Let's look at.
physical and psychological impact. So you are, you are male. And they will help you to manage it. Now they go to 64. What, what are those other genders? They came out from nowhere. Nowhere. There's no scientific base, no scientific research. I wonder what kind of science we'll be teaching in the next five, ten years if we allow them to change the textbooks. Science that has no basis. And scientific gender identities. They reach 64. Then there are irreversible gender transitions. And here again, we have data that shows studies in Netherlands, I think Sweden. Go back home. And if your kids ask them, Oh, Daddy, what happened in town today? I went to tell the world that your brother can marry a man. I went to tell the world that your, your sister can marry a woman. It's, it's absurd. I'm jumping the gun because my boss here is very, he's very nice, he's very calm, he's very, he'll be political and, you know, very about it. But I think that to be very economical with my language is absolute nonsense. And I say this not as an A4CG member. I have a right to my personal opinion. So nobody goes attacking A for CG. I think that the whole LGBTQI plus plus people, they need Jesus, they need reform, re reformation, and, and, and everybody needs to help these ones. With, with, because I have first-hand information, I've had first-hand experience reforming some of these people. I have one of them here in this in this press conference, you hear him talk in a while. And I think that. We, we shouldn't condone this. Rather, let's speak truth to power and stop all the intellectual dishonesty. So now to the purpose of our, our, our gathering here today. We are here to present to the public the scientific memo related to the LGBTQI A++ bill that's before parliament. I'll say that again. We are here to present to the public the scientific memo related to the LGBTQI A++ bill before Parliament. And I would enjoy everybody that's here, crave your deepest indulgence that you report exactly what is said here. And let's let's be good journalists that speak truth to power. Good morning and God bless you.